doing a video of advice if I put that hands free. Okay. So I've got to use all these adapters on me. You know, I've got to take certain things off the other thing and then thread them on because they've all got different threading uh, so forth. So I'm going to put two microphones on here. Um, so I need to get the other, other microphone part. I think this will fit. <laughs> yeah. Just gotta make sure the thread, because you've got the, the inside the uh, inside these. You can take this this part out, and then you'd have a wider diameter for a different um, microphone boom and so forth. Just roughly trying to sp spread space the microphones out a little bit. So I'll use a single mono. Well, I could put the microphone on the uh, on the audio mixer. I could set them up so they are kind of like stereo using the pan pot. Yeah, that should be good enough. Two microphones. a little bit wide. I have got the narrow, I have got the narrow ones <laughs> that come with the uh, microphones in the layers. So I'll just stick a bit of foam in there. Uh, thank you. So, there we go. So I can move the microphones around in a, you know, sort of thing like, like that. It's a bit awkward here. The only problem there is up and down. So I have to move the arm up and down slightly. Uh, it would have been okay if there was another adapter down this end, so I'd get a little bit more um, orientation. Because really, you need it kind of like just like that. So move it. Or I just um, pull it off the damn thing and just move it around freely, you know, that way, point it that way, this way, that way, point it near my head, or, you know, get different frequency readings, uh, or just move it around the room, near to the wall surfaces, anything, the seat, anything, everything. The sound's going to come this way, it's going to reflect off that, it's going to reflect off the microphone. Oh no, oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> there goes the auto EQ. Oh, that's out the window. I have to move them in a little bit like that if I want to. Move them a little bit wider. Yeah, whatever. Okay. But I'm just generally looking at the frequency response at high resolution, so then I see all the other frequencies that are like, uh, oh right, these frequencies are peaking a little bit high, you know, so they need to be flat. That's how it's going to be on the RT, uh, on the, the electronically through the uh, from the generator through to the amplifier. Amplifier is only either going to uh, have a high frequency boost on it, or it's going to shallow off. It's even going to be, or it's going to be flat. It's going to be one of three things. Um, and then just adjusting, adjusting. I, I was thinking you could get maybe something like a microphone headphone set that you know you put around your ears, so. If I were to move my head around in different orientations and such, um, and it's only a rule of thumb, it's not an accuracy, it's not a, a, a thing that's literally for accuracy, it's just a therefore rule of thumb like, okay, I think those frequencies need to come down a little bit. You won't hear them while all the rest of the pink noise is playing unless you use the frequency crossover and that and just bring it right up to the top so you only hear that like. <laughs> The rest of the frequencies going up to the highest until they roll off or whatever, um, and then you're gonna still be saying, mm, "Can I just hear that?" Or mm, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe yeah. Uh, maybe those high, high, highs need still need to be boosted a little bit higher up because of the Fletcher Monson's curve. Um, anyway, so that's my that's my setup. I'm gonna 
have another well DEQ, manual EQ, uh, manually adjusting the frequency response from the loudspeaker position behind the screen, behind the AT screen, to where they, um, yeah, I don't use any auto EQ. Auto EQ is for, for, for lazy home theatre sounding. Manual EQ is what really makes it personal and you know you got to have hours. If most people have got an AVR probably can't do manual EQ because it's only got what well, at the most most AVRs have got something like a half octave EQ. They haven't got third back they haven't got third octave or anything so it's or third octave with additional say parametric additional filters and so you can you bring down some of the parametric the, the, the third octave yeah once and then you look at the rest of it at high resolution and you see yeah that frequency there is peaking move the microphone around or so forth how much is it changing by you know because sometimes you get you think you got a null uh, like a dip in the frequency and you just move the microphone around slightly a little bit and it improves you know um, and then of course you've got to have like you got to have multiple rigs of these sort of thing Mul multiple rigs so you can got one for the back back seating and um, that's where it takes days days not not a couple of not, not 20 minutes with an auto EQ and then you're still scratching your head thinking where's all the bass gone the bass is there the only problem is most of these AVRs is if it had say like low and par, low pass high pass filters uh, maybe parametric ones as well so you can put a filter in the middle and just lower this frequency range down so it sounds a little bit harsh still a bit you know Every, all the other frequencies are all dialed in and they're nice and flat within a few dB tolerance and you can bring that down and then maybe put a low pass filter down this end and then raise up the bass level sort of thing and then turn the gain level up a little bit and then maybe put a little elevation on the high end a little bit so you hear those top alien free mixed in 1982 up to 18,000 kilohertz high frequency on the CAT scan scene inside of you. It's not possible. What does it look like? Horrible. <laughs> if you can hear that, if you can hear that up to that elevation range, getting up to 80, well, I think you're doing pretty well for your home theatre. <laughs>